Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the weekly update from the Ashland Hawk Watch in Hokesson, Delaware. Today is October 25th, 2024. We had great weather all week. In fact, it was sunny every day with blue skies of death most days. In fact, in this photo from today, you can see some clouds on the horizon, and that's the most clouds that we saw all week. And it's just really a beautiful time of year to be out as we're entering the peak of the fall foliage. Jumping into the hawks, let's start off with an easy one. Here we see a Buteo that has a completely red tail, so that kind of gives it away. But we also see dark patagial bars and a belly band and a dark trailing edge to the wings. This is an adult red-tailed hawk. And as we're getting into the end of October now, the numbers of migrating red tails are going to pick up over the next few weeks. Here we have a hawk shaped like a flying cross, so we should be thinking excipiter, or perhaps something formerly known as an excipiter. I'll touch on that in a moment. On this bird, we see a big rounded tip to the tail because the outer tail feathers are shorter than the central ones. We see a big head, pretty lanky overall. So this is a Cooper's hawk. Looking at the orange barring to the underside, we know it's an adult Cooper's hawk. Now, why did I say a hawk formerly known as an excipiter? That has to do with a new taxonomic update that just came out on eBird. The taxonomy that eBird follows, the Cooper's hawk as well as the American goshawk have been moved out of the excipitor genus and are now part of the aster genus, A-S-T-U-R, whereas the sharp-shinned hawk remains in the excipitor genus. So that currently applies to eBird. For North American listing, there's usually a different taxonomy that's followed where that change has not been made yet, but may be made sometime in the future. And it's going to make things confusing for hawk watches because we really like that grouping of excipiter when we see a hawk shaped like a flying cross. It's very convenient, often at a distance when you're first seeing it, you can't tell if it's a sharp shinned or a coopers or a goshawk. So excipiter was a nice label to use for all three species when you couldn't quite narrow it down to species yet. And I have a feeling that many hawk watchers are going to continue to call them all excipiters regardless of the actual taxonomic changes. And speaking of excipiters, here we have the brave little sharp shinned hawk representing the excipiter genus. And on this bird, you can see it has a very squared off tip to the tail. All of the tail feathers are about the same length, kind of a smaller head, more compact shape overall. So sharp shinned hawk. I like to keep an eye on the airplanes that are going by the hawk watch. And this one caught my eye as something different. I could see some lettering towards the front and red, white, and blue colors along with an American flag on the tail. And I said, Wait a minute, I know that airplane. That's Trump Force One. That's Donald Trump's 757. So this isn't a political channel, but it's kind of fun with Pennsylvania being a swing state and us being pretty close to the Philadelphia airport. We get to see some of the political planes coming and going. So cool to see this airplane in person, regardless of your political views. And just to keep things balanced, here's one of the presidential helicopters flying by this week. And we also had this plane, which is a Boeing C-32A, which is basically the military version of the Boeing 757. And this is the kind of plane that's often used by the vice president as Air Force Two, although I'm not sure that Kamala was actually on this plane when we saw it. I think she was elsewhere campaigning. But in fact, there is actually a bird in this photo. I just noticed as I was preparing the photos for this video, if you look here near the engine, you can see there's actually a little tree swallow that looks like it's about to get sucked into the engine. But of course, the swallow was much lower than the airplane and not in any danger. So don't worry about that. But it's kind of interesting because the plane is blue underneath and white on top, whereas the tree swallow is blue on top and white underneath. So kind of opposites, but similar colors. Here we have a couple of raptors, and the one that's in focus, we can see it's kind of lanky with drooping wings, a kind of distinctive shape overall and a black and white plumage. This is an osprey, and it's getting late for osprey, but it seems like there's one that's kind of settled in that we're seeing every day. And in the background, out of focus, there's two adult bald eagles chasing each other. The non-raptor highlight of the week for us up at the Hawk Watch was this clay-colored sparrow. You can see they're very similar to chipping sparrows, but on chipping sparrows, the line goes through the eye and it continues in front, whereas on the clay-colored, it's more of a brownish face with no real line through the eye. So you need a good look sometimes to really distinguish them, but this one was in pretty good light for us, and this was actually my first clay-colored sparrow for Delaware. 
We're getting into the time of year when golden eagle is a possibility, so we need to study every eagle closely to make sure we're not letting any slip by. So I thought I would put some eagle examples in so we could practice identifying them. On this eagle, we see that it has a large head that's very white, and we see a lot of white in the wing pit areas here, making this an immature bald eagle. Here we have a Budio overhead, and just from the colors alone, we should be able to identify this as an adult red-shouldered hawk with a lot of orange to the underside and then a pretty distinctive black and white plumage to the wings and tail. And we also see the translucent crescents near the wingtips that all red-shouldered hawks show. Here we have a hawk, looks like a flying cross with a long tail and long wings that are rounded at the wingtips. On this bird, we see a very rounded tail, somewhat large head, and teardrop streaking that's more heavily concentrated on the upper breast, not so much as you get down to the belly. Big and lanky overall, this is a juvenile Cooper's hawk. Here we have another eagle. On this one, we see a very large head and a lot of white in the wing pit area. This is a juvenile bald eagle. Here we have a bird that has a somewhat long tail, but we see pointed wingtips, so we should be thinking falcon. We see some dark vertical streaking to the underside, and we see a dark tail with some white bands to it. This is a merlin. We've been seeing a few gulls. Here we have one that's large and bulky. We can see some pink feet trailing here under the tail. And looking at the bill, we see a yellow upper mandible and a lower mandible that perhaps has some red or black to it. And this is another new name change on eBird with the new taxonomic update. This is now known as the American herring gall, whereas before it was simply herring gall. Here's a raptor with a distinctive shape. We can see a long tail and long, thin, pointed wings. This is a northern harrier, and this is the very distinctive adult male plumage. White overall with dark trailing edge to the secondaries and dark wingtips. This is also known as a gray ghost adult male northern harrier. Here we have another one of these asteripeters. You can see a long tail on this one, but we see it's very squared off. All the tail feathers are about the same length. You can see the head's relatively small, kind of a thick streaking to the underside, not that teardrop streaking we saw on the Cooper's hawk, just messier streaking overall and kind of a compact shape. This is a juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. Here's a Budio high overhead. We see a dark belly band and we see dark patagial bars. This is a red-tailed hawk and we see a dark trailing edge to the wings and a red tail, making this an adult red-tailed hawk. Compare that to this bird where again, we see a dark belly band and dark patagial bars, but this bird's much lighter overall in color because it does not have the dark trailing edge to the wings and the tail is more brownish with some banding to it. This is a juvenile red-tailed hawk. Here's a bird that we had a handful of yesterday, and it's a species that I always enjoy seeing, maybe because of the beautiful bright yellow color to the underside, but also the very distinctive shape, kind of a short tail, very long, thin bill, and the way they flap, they almost don't flap up and down. It's like very short, stuttery downstrokes to the flap. This is an eastern meadowlark. Here we have a large corvid that flew overhead with a deep croaking call. This is a common raven. And compared to crows, ravens are quite a bit bigger. They have a larger head and bill. They just look more stretched out overall. So it's a bit of a longer tail where the central tail feathers are longer than the outer ones, giving it a bit of a different shape compared to the more rounded shape on crows. It's a little bit more pointed on the ravens. And the wings look a little bit longer and a little bit more pointed as well. Here we have another excipiter on this one. Note that it kind of looks like a big eyeball on a small head. And again, we see that really messy streaking to the underside. The tail is completely closed, so it's a little bit hard to judge from this posture. But this is another juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. Here's another species that we're entering peak migration time for. Here we have a vulture. So if you look at the head, you see that it doesn't have any feathers. You're seeing the red skin of the head. And looking at the overall plumage, the body and the wing coverts are dark, but the actual flight feathers of the wings and tail are silvery. And it's holding its wings up into a bit of a V-shape. And if we watched this bird fly, it would be very unsteady and wobble as it flies. This is a turkey vulture. Here's another hawk overhead from the overall shape. We should be thinking the Budio genus. And the first thing that should stand out from looking at this photo are these translucent crescents near the wingtips. Even if this bird was really, really, really high overhead against the blue skies, they're usually really noticeable. 
And anytime we're seeing the translucent crescents like this, we should be thinking red-shouldered hawk. And in this plumage, we can see the brown streaking to the underside of the body. Otherwise, pretty nondescript overall. This is the juvenile plumage of red-shouldered hawk. Here we have another eagle, and this one, if we saw it from a distance, it would just look really dark overall, but from close up, we do see that it has a lot of white throughout the wing linings and here in the wing pit area, and we see the head is relatively large. So this is a, another immature bald eagle. In a previous video, we compared the male plumages of purple finch versus house finch. Here we have the female plumages. You can see the purple finch on the left and the house finch on the right. Looking at the purple finch, a little bit bigger, and perhaps the most distinctive thing is the white patterning to the face that the house finch doesn't really show at all. And if we look at the bills, usually on a purple finch, the this line made by the top of the bill is more straight, whereas on the house finch, it's more curved. And also notice the forked tail of the purple finch compared to the more straight tail tip to the house finch. Here's another adult red-shouldered hawk that gave us a nice look today as it flew over low against the blue sky. After the hawk watch today, I ran over to a local park where this bird has been seen for the past few days, and this is a life bird for me. This is a Bell's Vireo, and this is the third or fourth state record. There was actually one a few weeks ago down in Sussex County that Kim and I went down and missed. She went back down later and got that bird. Um, but I still needed it. So when this bird showed up, this was actually my third attempt. I went two days ago, and then I went this morning, and then I went again today after work and finally got it. You can see it was in very nice light and very cooperative. This is a species that's very rare in the East, and I was happy to get it as a new life bird. Taking a look at hawk count, if we look at this period, this week started on the 19th. And looking at the totals from this week, like I said, the weather was pretty nice every day. Some days the winds were more favorable than others, but pretty steady with the flights. You can see we had around 200 birds on some of the better days, 95, 103. The lowest day of the period was only 47 birds. And looking at the numbers, it's been pretty steady with turkey vultures, with around 100 turkey vultures on the better days, and at least a few dozen on the slower days. It's been pretty steady with the sharp-shinned hawks as well, 37 one day, 40 today, and the past two days we've done well on northern harriers with 10 and 8. Uh, Cooper's hawks were getting some. Red-shouldered hawk numbers are starting to pick up. We had 10 today, which is the highest we've had all season, and they'll peak as we get into the beginning of November. Uh, red tails have been a little bit low, but starting to pick up here towards the end, and the falcons seem to have really dropped off. We've been seeing some merlins, but um, part of the ones we're seeing, it seems like we're seeing the same bird over and over, like I was saying, with the osprey as well. It seems like there's one that's settled into the area, so we need to be a little bit careful about what we're counting. And you can see that we have not had any golden eagles yet, although maybe we'll get our first tomorrow. It's looking like pretty good winds, and... Uh, we'll start to get them. Usually the peak time for the Golden Eagles would be the first week of November. So we're really into the time period that they're possible. And every day they're becoming more and more likely. Um, but I'm hoping we get our first one tomorrow. It's nice when people can come out on the weekend and get their Golden Eagle for the season. Although it's partly sad because there's, there's a lot of people who, when they come up and get their Golden Eagle, we never see them again. That's their last visit of the season. They just want to check that one off their list, and Ashland is the easiest place in the state to get it. We'll be up at the Ashland Hawk Watch through the end of November, seeing what raptors and other birds we can see. So come out and join us. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.